consider it kind of an embarrassing, of, of my embarrassing uh, things I have embarrassing uh, uh, likes for, it's maybe the most exalted of them, but it is still slightly embarrassing. Not just because Eyes Wide Shut is a sort of infamously um, unpleasant film, but also because it's a film about male sexual angst. So when I watch it uh, again now, which I did just now in preparation for this brief talk, I, it says something to me about where my head was at 17 years ago when it came, about, came out. Um, but it is probably the work of art I've, I've engaged with more than any other. Have people seen it? Show of hands. Okay, uh, so I won't waste time in this brief talk in recounting it, but it's basically the story of a doctor played by Tom Cruise, Bill Hartford, and his wife. The movie begins. Uh, they're at a party where they sort of experience uh, are both tempted into adulterous kind of scenarios. And then the rest of the movie is Tom Cruise in an episodic series of, of um, uh, slightly uh, transgressive scenarios culminating in the middle with the famous orgy scene from the film. This is a, this, uh, hard to see still. It's sort of is from that. And then, it, it, perplexingly, the movie then, the second hour and a half of the movie retraces those scenes as he returns to each of them, and they're a little more sordid um, or less erotic than he, uh, the, than the first time around. The, 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 the prostitute that he had an encounter with the first time turns out to have HIV, and the second half, the, the young girl who flirted with him turns out to be a child prostitute. And so I'm culminating with uh, um, his uh, character, character played by Sidney Pollack, Revealing to him, um, uh, irritatingly, I think for most viewers, that there is no conspiracy, that he's been trying to track down the conspiracy and revealing that there is no conspiracy. So there's a style. Why do I like the film, or what inspires me about it, or what what, what uh, piques my imagination about it on a personal level? Uh, there's a style of Kubrick criticism that's kind of conspiratorial. You know, his film went, filmmaking lends itself to this. Like every detail means something. I was watching. I looked up. Um, a, a, uh, one of the graffiti, uh, graffiti from the film in, on, when I was watching it today, and literally there's a blog post about that, just that piece of cryptic graffiti in the film. There's this great um, documentary called A Room 237, which is just about different conspiracy theories about The Shining. Um, and Eyes Wide Shut is a movie where I think that almost every little detail um, connects to a larger theme. So the first two lines of the film are Tom Cruise's character says, have you seen my wallet? And Nicole Kidman's character says, it's on the table by the bed. And really the entire movie, the entire movie is there. He's searching for his identity, and he'll constantly throughout the movie taking out his wallet, telling people who he is, he's a doctor, he's an important person, offering people money like, to use his influence. And it will be about him looking for the identity through, um, you know, through the bed. There is in, in relation to sex and dreams. So I do think you can do these kind of readings of the movie. For my, one of the things, this is a, I saw this when I was in college, it came out when I was in college, um, and uh, it, it was not a hit, it was quite negatively received, but I somehow like, really wanted to like it. Um, and I think that almost it was the negative reviews of it that I found most illuminating, and that stayed with me. So that. Almost every bad review of it, I, it's like, what they criticized about it, I would go back and be like, you know what, that's deliberate, you know? <laughs> and so, I think what the film taught me is that, so, that the things that frustrate your, your, um, your reading or interpretation of something can be, um, can be part of what makes them great. So I'll just give you a couple of examples. I remember reading one review of the movie, you know, it, Talk that Stanley, Stanley Kubrick finished the movie five days before he died. So, and there were debates with the studio. It's, it's an unusual film, so there, there are debates with the studio about how it should be. So I remember one criticism of the movie being like, obviously we had more time. He would have taken out some of this repetition. You know, Tom Cruise, is always, he says the same thing over and over again. And it's, the whole movie has this kind of, everybody seems like they're on drugs a little bit. Like it's really it's slowed down, distended. And you know what you think about it? Look, that's the point. That, that's that's de very deliberate in this movie. This is about, this, the entire movie is supposed to be dreamlike. It doesn't make any sense as a, a, as a narrative, really. It's supposed to be dreamlike. And it's about a man uh, trying to find his desire in the case where his desire is misfire, sort of stuck in repetition. 
So there's, I think, pretty obviously, when you watch the movie again, he is constantly sort of, people are telling him things, and he's repeating the same thing over and over again. It's about him hitting up a wall, un unable to construct a narrative of desire. <clears throat> um, I think uh, another very typical, the, the words you see in, in the middle of the film uh, is um, sort of iconic. But also, I think the movie was sold as an erotic thriller, and for a lot of people, um, one person like, it's pretty cold, you know, it's a pretty cold scene. Um, it's not, it's titillating, but it's not um, ultimately that satisfying as an erotic spectacle. That's obviously deliberate, right? You know, the, the, it's staged in a way that it ends up being kind of mechanical because the movie is about him going deeper and deeper into different scenarios, erotic scenarios that, that might kind of, um, I think, uh, the movie's about possession. So, how the idea that you know um, you can't uh, possess someone else's fantasies, and it's best to, to be able to live um, live with them. So to, to live with their, their to accept that there's a space of desire that separates you from someone else. And so it's kind of about the failure. You know, you get to the deepest kind of most transgressive taboo place. And it's clearly stages it as as a failure in a way. And you can really see this actually. If you watch, there's a Mystical video, the rapper Mystical that parodies the Eyes Wide Shut video. Because, and you can really, the Eyes Wide Shut word you see, and you can really see in the changes that they make, how deliberate some of the changes, how the, some of the choices in the Stanley Kubrick scene were to make it kind of cold and actually um, non erotic There's one review I remember that said, there's a, it's a, uh, it's a 10 minute long, anguishing scene at the end of the movie where um, the Sydney, like I mentioned before, the Sydney Pollock character, this older male figure, confronts Tom Cruise. He said, I know you've been sniffing around about this kind of conspiracy theories, and it sort of concludes with him saying, uh, you know, there's nothing, nothing happened. There's nothing here. There's no actual secret that you're trying to find out. Um, and this is a scene where it's particularly true that Tom Cruise repeats himself a lot. He can't get, he can't arrive at an agreement about that fact. And I remember one of the reviews saying, this is such a boring scene, it really seems to be more about the fact that they're around a red pool table than any narrative thing. Mm -hmm. And I, the more I thought about it, I was like, that, that's true. You know, it actually, the fact that there's a massive red object in the center of the room is really important. And when you kind of unpack it, the entire movie is composed out of variations of red and blue, because it's about uh, male and female principles. And, so the final moment when he has to kind of really pass through his desire and realize, you know, maybe there is no transgressive, taboo, mysterious, secret scenario that I'm trying to find out. There is this red mass at the symbol at the center of the scene because it sort of symbolizes this kind of blockage that he can get in over. Um, so, uh, so I think so, and then that that you know, in some ways. To conclude, I mean, that's a very simple message. I think, in a way, this is just a, a kind of conventional artistic thinking. You know, there are forms of pleasure, and this film has actually given me a lot of pleasure that um, are not obvious, that arrive as you think through something or with something. In some way, that's, that's an obvious thing, but it's like one of my various first experiences with that sort of artistic pleasure. I think on a bigger level, you know, I think would defend that the movie has a larger message that's sort of deep about the relationship of this story, the love stories we tell ourselves, stories about desire we tell ourselves, and film form itself. The, the successful relationship might be more like an art movie that's a puzzle that you have to slowly unlock than it is like a Hollywood blockbuster or a simple romance that, that you arrive at the, the kind of pleasure it gives you all in one blow. That's my... Riff on Ice White Show. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>